And Mike if Cooley. It, would, yeah. it, it <clears throat> wouldn't be no thug life album if it wasn't for Man Man and Bays. Cause they the one. This is your boy DOC, and I got someone very special on the line directly from the Thug Life Tupac era back in the day in Northern California. Can you go ahead and introduce yourself and where you're from? Hey, man, my name is Babes. I'm from Richmond, California. Now, a while, uh, a little while ago, I was watching an interview on Vlad TV where Big Psych gave a big shout out to you and Man Man, and he said for putting up the bread to create thug like can you elaborate on that like you know would you consider yourself like the co-founder or, or like what what was that about well it was like uh i wouldn't say a phase it became it was like a compilation as far as the uh the record goes but it was like a phase pop was going through i mean you know like the person was the 50 niggas and then it, it came on into the thug life where you know he actually formed a group um and then uh interscope didn't want to you know put that out there they were trying to make another image out of Pac and you know a weaker image or whatever so we put up the bread me and um me and my cousin man man put up the bread because um you know Pac needed it and Pac went in and put the other uh, third in so I guess okay let's start back go back a little bit as far as uh when did you actually meet Tupac man I met Tupac probably in about 1990 Probably about 1990, um, I had an apartment. Um, I used to have a lot of dice games in my apartment. Um, there was a party um, down at this little lounge, and um, my, my, Mike Kuliak came to the to the party with Pac. And uh, Mike Cooley, after the party, the dice game was at my house, so Mike Cooley and the chicks and Pac, we all came up to uh, to my house in Canole, and, um, you know, we shot dice, and, you know, I clowned around, and, you know, Pac rapped. You know, and we know, we just, you know, clown around. That's when I know he was something, you know what I mean? Once he, I seen him freestyle for two hours straight, you know what I mean? That was, it was, <laughs> it was wild. So how, how would you describe Tupac as a person, like, before the, the Thug Life era, before we got to know who he was, like, during that time? I hear a lot about Marin City and different things up in that era. Like, how would you describe that era during that time? Well, my Tupac was an artist, man. He was a rapper's rapper. You hear me? I mean, I would shoot, go to Echo Sound with him and look at him in the booth. You know what I mean? And once you get that look from him, he's, he's going in. I mean, but as far as the gangsterism part, I mean, he really didn't have to be that. You know what I mean? Yet, I mean, he went in that direction. But at first, Pac wasn't, you know, he wasn't into that. He was just an artist. I mean, he wasn't no punk to say, you know, shoot. If given a fair fight, I mean, you know, the, the dudes in Marin City, they didn't necessarily give him a fair fight. You know what I mean? And shoot, that, that was a thing with them. If they had anything to say as far as Pac being a punk. But, um, you know, shoot, Pac was, you know, he was just an artist, man. He was, you know, he was a weird dude, you would say. You know what I mean? I mean, we'd be on the planes, you know, flying from different places. He'd be looking at books that you would never imagine. I mean, you would never imagine reading these type of things. You know what I mean? Right. And then that, that's what he would form his art from, you know, but... Yeah, Pac was, I mean, he he kind of skipped off into that lane. I mean, it's gradually into thug life, you know what I mean? As we toured different spots, we man, we went to jail, different spots. Uh, I mean, you know, <laughs> just got into a bunch of trouble, get kicked out of different hotels. I mean, you know, a lot of alcohol involved. I mean, but, you know, yeah, Pac, Pac kind of formulated into that, man. He wasn't that at first. Right. I mean, coming, you know, he was just an artist, man. Do you think it was like the influences from you, the, the people that was around him that that kind of formed the Thug Life? Like, was it a specific message that he wanted to give through the Thug Life, or he just wanted to like? I don't, I don't know how to. Well, do. well, no, he wanted to have thugs from everywhere. I mean, he, we came from the Bay, um, you know, uh, Rated R, Mac Ten, and a uh, Big Psych. They came from L.A. I mean, Big Stretch. He came from New York. Um, you know, he just wanted to formulate, and even even Tretch. I mean, Tretch was a, a some, somewhat in thug life. <laughs> I mean, but yeah, he just wanted to form a big, you know, like 50 niggas, like the 50 niggas uh, tattoo he has. That was like a, a, a like a, 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 like not a cult, but you know, like a clan, you know what I mean? 
Um, and Thug Life became the next thing, you know what I mean? The way, you know, you wanted to get thugs from everywhere. The Crip Blood, was, we, we toured everywhere, Chicago, and, you know, we went where the thugs were at. You know what I mean? And we, that's what we represented. You know what I mean? Represented Thug Life, you know? What, so, what, yeah, that, that's the message you wanted to get across. Was this before the, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, because I'm, like I said, I don't really know the timeline, but I'm trying to, was this before like the outlaws and all that stuff did did you get the opportunity to, to, to mix and mingle with the outlaws or were that already put together well when we went to a, a fundraiser it was a fundraiser in uh moran city and the outlaws were there then uh yav which was uh what they call Qaddafi, um he had a cast on his leg and when the, when the stuff broke out when the little boy got killed out there um you know we had to lift uh Qaddafi over the over the defense we had to run from these dudes I mean, it was like the whole park turned on us. So, you know, but yeah, the outlaws was there then. Now, I don't even think they were even necessarily rapping all like that. I mean, I think Castro, yeah, Castro, they were. As a matter of fact, they were. And, and Edie, I mean, we, they all were there. But yeah, man, man, those are my those are my, my dogs right there. I just had, I just seen uh, Edie at a site funeral. So I'm wondering like, okay, a lot, of, a lot of misconceptions of people that have, especially nowadays, a lot of people, you know, with this movie that's coming out, I'm wondering, have anybody from the movie contacted any of you guys from the original Thug Life, like in the Bay Area, you know, to give y'all insight on the movie or no, anything like that? No, no, no directors have contacted us in, in anything, and they cannot tell that man's life without telling us. My man is the first one who produced Tupac, the Underground Railroad. Man, man, and Mike Cooley is the first one who to, who who got Tupac in the industry. So how could they, I mean, how could they not mention them? How could they not, a director not get their story? I mean, at least them. Then then there's us. Arsenio Hall, I mean, I mean, everything, man. I mean, shoot, it's too much to, to name. Right. I mean, up until he went to jail with man for the rape. So how are they going to cut around that, I wonder? Right. Um, and then they, they say Big Psych, they haven't even really gave a, you know, mention of Big Psych in, in the movie. I'm wondering how, what type of direction they're going to go in with this, if it's just going to be Hollywood just to sell tickets or if it's going to be the real story. Because I'm hearing a lot of people, even like yourself, saying, like, they didn't reach out to us to get no information, so how would no, they... No, no, no. I, I mean, Psych was telling me something about a movie uh, uh, following this movie um, called Thug Life. It was actually called Thug Life, and the, and the director was going to be actually getting our information. Psych told me this before he died. I was in touch with Psych. Like a month before he died, he told me this, man. Yeah. Uh, so, you know what I mean? But, you know, I never did find out that, you know, I, I, I tried to talk with Atrian, which is Pac manager. Um, and, you know, I think he managed uh, Psych as well. But, however, I never did get the straight of it, man. But no one ever contacted me. So if they come up with my, you know, my character in there, what am I to do? That's defamation of character, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They don't suppose to use your likeness. In no, not at all. Right. No, not at all. Yeah, it's, it's been crazy, especially Duck the past couple TV. months, you know, leading up to this movie. But it's like I kind of be wanting to focus on because that's a big gray area in Tupac yeah. life of of the, you know, the Oakland stage. Like when when he was around then, was he pushing the, the, the Black Panther cause? Was that what he talking about it? What, you know, was his mom around or what, what was going that, on? That was his, no, that was his character. Let me tell you, man, Pac was a strong dude as far as that goes, man. He should have stayed on that path. Pac was, just, I mean, so much so to where I was in just different, uh, you know, unsavory things back then, you know what I mean? So I was in the street doing street stuff. And um, I come back in and Pac would be right there at our spot, you know what I mean? And um, Or we'll be in the Rich Marina at Pac's spot. And I come in with the, with the you know, oopla or whatever, and then Pac would be like, man, so what happens if this happens to you? Or, well, you know, he like questioning about, you know, because he ain't never been exposed to none of this. You know, this stuff don't happen in Marin. You know where he came from. This type of stuff, though, man, they may fight over there. This won't happen over there. So he's like, dang, like, dang, this you doing this, dang, this happened? Or, you know, when, when I'm coming in, like, man, you know, this is everyday stuff that's happening. You know what I mean? So then from right there, um, he moved to L.A. We, we, we moved him to L.A. I mean, we more or less moved to L.A. with him. You know what I mean? Uh, when we were in Marin City and that stuff happened with him in Marin City, he had taken a, a chick, one of those rats from Marin City or whatever, to his, to his place in Richmond. So then he just fleed the whole Bay Area and went to L.A. That's, that, you know, but Thug Life was born in Richmond right there at the Merch Marina. 
And then he went, then we went to LA and met Sight. We went to LA and you know and met you know, Raiders in my Mac Ten. Mm. Macadocious, excuse me. And Big Surge. So he was kind of tough on the Black Panther, uh the movie. Yeah, man. When when we went when we went, as a matter of fact, when we when he first moved when we first moved him to LA, we went to a Black Panther rally. Him did, during that time did it seem as if like him and his mom was real close? Did y'all get the opportunity to meet her or she was Yeah, back in the Finney stayed with Pot. I mean, it's Finney, and when he when he stayed in Star Sherman Oaks, because I more or less stayed with him in Sherman Oaks as well. But if Finney stayed, she stayed there. Right. Yeah, Finney. I mean, she went on tour with us. As a matter of fact, she done different short shows with us. Did, did she go on a third life tour with us? Uh, no, she just done different shows with us. Yeah. So, so what actually what albums was out like during that time during that era that he was putting out? Well, I done the to Tup- now. I done like the the ending of that until Stri- strictly for my niggas, and then the Thug Life. Then we done a Thug Life tour. He introduced Thug Life on the strictly for my niggas when we was done touring the strictly for my niggas stuff. Right. We did, we done about probably about thirty shows with the strictly for my niggas stuff, and then um. He was promoting Thug Life. Like, we do a couple of tracks on, um, you know, on the Strictly For My Niggas tour. But then we went on the Thug Life tour. So, all right, now the, the part, did you see a difference in him, like, after, around the rape case, like, once he went, like, leading up to that case, and, like, afterwards, what, what change did you see in him after that? Well, first off, that, that, that rape case was a bunch of trash, man. I mean... Back then, we were young. I mean, shoot, we were young and wild, true enough. I mean, but man, we used to come from the house of blues, man, with dimes, man. I mean, you know, I mean, you know, and it was good, you know. I mean, not to even get to- too so far into it, but I mean, I and I know, man, this is someone I never not knew. You know what I mean? That just this, this showed me the game, you know. So I know, I knew better than that, even though I wasn't there personally, but you know, and. So when it went down, it was just already understood. Like, you know, so I know y'all didn't do it, man. That's wrong. Y'all got caught up. Y'all put yourself in that situation. But then, you know, um, I guess you would say when he guys just you know, starts messing with Suge and them, you know what I mean? I guess he, like, you know, switch reels. I'll say that. Yeah. You know? But now, you know, it didn't never come down to him, you know, getting disrespectful or nothing like that. But now, you know. That's that's what kind of change I seen in him. You know what I mean? Yeah. Maybe because he wasn't around the same characters. You know, such as Psych or you know, Nuke or you know. Well, they were more like mentors in a way. Well, yeah. Psych was all of you know. He was older. You know, he's older than us. So you know, Psych would like had a command a lot. You know what I mean? Yeah. To tell you the truth, I mean, shoot, Pac was our friend. He wasn't. He wasn't. I mean, yeah, we toured. He paid us some. You know, but. We didn't really count on that. I mean, we had other Avengers that we were into, you know. So, you know, we were more or less his friend. When we, you know, that was our partner. That's how we ran. So, you know, he he felt that he felt that family vibe, that that family orientation, man. You know what I mean? Like, you know, that that he had never felt because when he was over there in Marine, he never felt that about them dudes over there. Them dudes always hated on him. You know, so, you know, so when he got with us, you know, it was, it was that's all how good. it was. So when right. when he got with Suge, man, man, like I said, you know, he, 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 went, he went a certain way, man. Now, were, were y'all still, and I, I know you say y'all the ones that moved him down there to L.A., even, but he was down there for maybe, unfortunately, were down there for, what, like a year, year and a half? Was y'all around during that whole time, like throughout that whole all, of, all eyes on me process and all that stuff? No, no, no. Once him and man caught the uh, the case, that's when things separated. I mean, you know, that's when Suge built. I don't, I don't even know Suge. Right. You know, Suge. I don't know him to disrespect him or respect him. Yeah. Oh, so, you know, that's what that is. So I'm, I'm trying to see now on the timeline of, so if, the, if that happened with the Suge and all that stuff, so the, the very first shooting that ended up happening y'all was y'all out there in new york was y'all around during that time when that very first shooting happened out in uh new york i believe man was if i'm not mistaken i believe TV. man was with pot yeah so i we, believe yeah, that happened that happened before the rape right so yeah i believe man was with pot back then man and it, it was crazy how you know i heard how it went down and everything i talked to big stretch and you know 
It was just a, a big mess, man. What like was the temperature like out back on the on the west coast in y'all area? You know, like was it more or less like we got to protect him more to keep him away from the bullshit, or was he starting to stray off on his own? Or well, see, me me and Pac the same age, like, and not not to say that even that's neither here nor there, but I mean, you know, I, I was wild back then. I mean, and and alcohol didn't make it no better, but um, you know, and. Man, like, wasn't as, you know, he wasn't as wild. Never has been like, like that, you know what I mean? So he kind of, like, would, su- you know, suggest different things, but then Pac had the, the, you know, the upper hand, like, you know? But, uh, you know, he would just tell Pac, you know, not to go so 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 hard, you know? Right. And Pac, but Pac just felt so strong about, you know, like, different things, like about police, mistreatment of, you know, you know, just wow. Right. Cause he actually went through a police brutality, like situation. Was that that was up there in the Bay? Yeah, that was in Oakland. Um, him and Man was uh, uh, over in um, Oakland, uh, someplace I believe downtown Oakland. And a crowd, you know, surrounded him or whatever, and the police, uh, you know, whooped on him, and he sued him. And then from that point, that's when he just started going hard on the police. Well, I mean, I've, I've been in the Hilltop Mall in, here in Richmond, and. Um, a girl was, you know, just following Pac. You know how girls see celebrities or whatever? But you know, back then he had Juice had came out, I believe. I'm not sure, but... And the security guard, like, grabbed her arm, like, you know, almost broke her arm. Right. And, and Pac, like, stepped up and, like, like, snapped, you know? And I'm like, wow. <laughs> yeah. You know, so... See, from the outside, yeah. see, from the outside looking in, <clears throat> say, for instance, for an individual like myself that was just watching... Tupac on TV and movies and stuff, you know, it, I don't know if it's a misconception or not, but a lot of people felt like during, because you, you just brought the movie up, Juice, a lot of people was like he never left out of that character, like personally knowing him, like behind the scenes, uh, did you ever hear that or feel that or you felt like he was the same person throughout that whole stretch? Yeah, I would say that too. Then, Honestly, I would say that. With that, he, he never left out of that he, role. He never left. He never left. He never left Bishop. Mm. He never left. Bishop never left him. <laughs> I mean, even the guy on um the, the the role he played on Above the Rim. Yeah. That that guy never left him. I mean, you know, but yeah, I mean, he was. I mean, Pac was a good dude. Yeah, right, right. Yeah, Let me just yeah. tell you that Pac was no punk. Pac was a good dude, man. Yeah. Straight up. I mean, shoot. All this wannabe, yeah, he's not a gangster because of this or because of that. I mean, you know, shoot, you see, shot a policeman, man, right. you know. <laughs> see, see, that'd be the thing to me, like, when people misinterpret <clears throat> being gangster with just being true to self. Like, from yeah, what I'm, from exactly. What I, from like what I'm being hearing, smart. Right. Like, what I'm from hearing from you is that this individual that you knew, he stood on certain principles and would go for yeah. that. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Yeah. And was real about it. Right. And I think that's yeah. I think that's a part of his legacy that people need to focus on more than just the the, the few negative things because as a celebrity you are gonna go through shit unfortunately. But it just no 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 no. But it's one thing I noticed, man. Um, Pac used to cuss out Interscope a lot. Like I'm calling them all kind of bitches, and I mean I mean this. I mean, excuse my French, but I mean just call them man. Fuck y'all. This and that. And hung up, hang up on them, and then you'd be right right back talking with them, right? Yeah. Because they wouldn't clear, they wouldn't give him, uh, you know, they wouldn't clear his samples on mm-hmm. a lot of stuff, or, or they would tell him back and forth. It, it was as if they were trying to mold him into a certain character. Yeah. And they would, they would, they wouldn't clear his samples on certain stuff, you know, on just say for instance, like the stuff Suge Knight later on brought out for him that actually made him, you know, uh, you know, the all eyes on me. You know, they wouldn't let him bring out things like that. Mm-hmm. They wanted to keep him in a in 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 in, in another character. Right. Uh, and the Brenda's got a, ha- got a baby character on the, you know, they don't want the thug life, like, like, as, like, you know, like I was saying, they don't want thug life to, to come out. Was it because they, they wanted to try to separate, like, on the business side, do you think they were making that decision because they were trying to separate? Now, the say, for instance, just like, okay, so you and Man Man's put up the money. Do you think yeah. Interscope was doing that because they were trying to separate the, the two entities so you guys wouldn't get a piece or... Or you think that was like I a don't know, decision? but I don't know when it all came down. There's a there's an album called uh, "Are You Still Down." Mm-hmm. That right there is what my money paid for right there. Yeah. In it, 
Thug Life Volume One, that that wasn't what we paid for. Mm. Ready for whatever, um, you know, all those. I mean, it's different tracks that end up in different places, right? But that's the, the money that TV. we put in. That's 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 the thug, original Thug Life Volume One. But then Interscope went ahead and took over it and cut us out. I mean, you know, uh, gave us some chump change to argue about and cut us out. You know what I mean? So, if, of course, I, I wasn't satisfied. And then being young and ignorant back then, of course, I was you know, pouting like a baby. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, you know, I was, shoot, I was kind of upset with Pac for a while. You know what I mean? Like, but, yeah. uh, yeah. If you could think back on those times, like, what were some of your most memorable moments, like, standout moments of just kicking it with Pop? Um, man, on my birthday in Chicago, man, um, I, I came back to my room, and, um, man, it was a cake on the bed, and, you know, it was, man, they just gave me a surprise, man, Kato, that's when Kato was alive, um, man, it was just a, a man, it was a big dash, man. Yeah. I mean, seriously, man, it was just a love, man. It was real love, like my birthday. Nobody, nobody don't celebrate, no, you know, your birthday like that. I mean, you got partners and everything. Yeah. But now, you know, he just caught when it was my birthday, man, and threw me like a, a mini bash in there, man, and then whipped on me, and then punched on me. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Gave me some love for my birthday, man. I never forget that, man. I never forget. Right in Chicago, man. Now, now speaking on Kato, how how did that that Particular man, individual. that was man, man. I love Kato, man. I mean, I can remember back when I was slipping in a room one time. We were in Columbus, Ohio, somewhere, and I let the, this chick take my phone out the hotel room. You know what I mean? We we was wilding, man. You know. So anyway, the chick was downstairs talking. Like, yeah, I got this phone. Kato snatched the phone. You know what I mean? I never, man. The Kato was just my, my 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 dog. Where we weren't rappers. We was just there. You know what I mean? Um, you know. Well, I was there with my venture, you know, with my, with my money. But Kato was, you know, we were just street niggas. You know what I mean? Right. So that's what we had in coming. That's how we messed with it, man. And that's how we messed with it. You know what I mean? We didn't work for Pac. So, you know, you know, it, we, we just did, man. It was all love, man. Yeah. And tell you, man, I love Kato, man. May he rest in peace. That's what I was going to ask you. How, how did that affect, how did Kato's passing affect you and, you know, Pac at that time? Well, yeah, I really felt it, man, because, you know, I was I was close to Kato, man. I mean, real, like I was just telling you. And Pac, like, see, Pac had never really had no dead homies. I mean, Marin City, dude, they don't kill each other out there. They wouldn't, I mean, which that's that's bad anywhere to do that. But he had never really been, you know, exposed to anything like that. That was probably his first dead homie. Mm. That I mean, you know, and then Mental, and then Mental from the Evil Mind, from Sykes, from Sykes Group. You know what I mean? When he he died, when we was on we was in uh, Philly somewhere, we was in Philly and got to where men, men got killed out there, man, by them dudes. But yeah, man, that man, that was like so Pac. That that like that kind of affected Pac, I would say. You know what I mean? It's like you know he like like dang, that could happen to me. Like you know what I mean? Me, I shit that happened to me. I mean, you know, I had pe seen people die and die over, you know, right? Which that was a part of what I was in you know, my environment. But on the other hand, him, he was, you know. And that kind of like, like, that kind of like translated over into the music when he started. Misery, getting, like, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> misery, I mean, like, not, it, it was crazy, man. It was crazy. I mean, he, he always, like, expressed himself through his music. And, I mean, what, like, cause at, at that point in time, I would say we had gotten separated. That's 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 after the uh, the rape case, you know what I mean? That's when he went into the you know, into the misery act, you know what I mean? So yeah, um, I, I was feeling through. I was feeling his music, man, and he know I was feeling his music, cause I was talking to him from time to time. Yeah. You know what I mean? And he, you know, but he was like, you know, he had fell into that mis misery, man. I think it was for, I mean, you know, like a form of depression from seeing all this yeah, stuff. Yeah, like, like 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 he was preparing himself for what happened, what for the inevitable, man. Yeah. You know what I mean? Really, because he—I mean, he know going in the path like that—that's that's down to happen, and he was willing to go, you know, he was willing to go get out how have he had to get out, right? You know what I mean? And and that's the crazy part about that whole situation, because I know it got to be a totally different feeling from being an individual that, you know, party together, you know, like you said, beat up on each other, have fun, rocking it with each other, then on the outside looking in, people looking at it. To to look at a human being, 
that you know a lot of people nowadays say oh I don't, I don't care i'm ready to die but for someone to really embrace it like i yeah, know this is yeah. what's gonna happen and, and i'm willing to yeah yeah i mean i mean you know when, when you when you're in life it's like you accept that like you know what i mean there ain't something you just stay looking at and stay focusing on but that's something that you accept you know what i mean i don't know if he wanted to keep that in people's face like you know this is what you up against or you know you might as well be singing the same song I'm singing if you're living like you're living. Or, you know, I don't know if you was like, I don't know what kind of picture you're trying to paint. Right. You know you know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah, man. Um, yeah, it was a trip to see him go into that, man. If he was still alive today, how do you think the rap scene or just everything in general, how do you think things would be? Man, Pac would rise to the occasion, man. Just let me let me let you know that Pac was a rapper's rapper. Couldn't nobody be Pac. Yeah. When, 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 when Pac stayed in Rich Marina, man, he had this whole floor was filled with binders, not binders for the raps, man. This dude, I mean, this back before, I mean, you know, multimedia and you know different gadgets and you know, what I mean, Pac was a rapper's rapper, man. Nobody could have messed with Pac. So he and then he can only steer the generation. They had their ears flapping for him, man. He could have steered the, the generation in that direction. I don't, I don't care if it was in the Black Panther direction. Maybe that would have helped us out. You know what I mean? I mean, or, or whatever. You know what I mean? It seems I just hate that he went into the gangster, the gangster. and end up, you know, end up, end up. Yeah. And that's 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 the part where you know where all the and I don't like to really just myself get into the conspiracies, but seeing a man that had that much power with that many ears listening to him you know and that could affect that many individuals a lot, a lot of people feel like you know it was purposely and i ain't trying to really go off into all that you know because that's you'll go right in you'll go right in man you'll yeah, go right in yeah. but that's what i was just gonna say a lot of people feel like with the power that he had mixing those sublim you know those messages in his music yeah not making it real preachy but still putting those gems in there for people to to, to, to learn that it was yeah. that his ending had to happen. Like the industry didn't really want that. You know how, yeah. how, how you felt about that? Well, I really I don't think they wanted him to express any kind of movement in the direction of blackness. I'm I, really that that's that's what I thought they feared right there. Yeah. Because I, I, as I said, I, I watched him like not clear a lot of his samples, man. I mean, a lot of them was full of. Um, you know, gangster stuff, but a lot of them was full of stuff against the oppression. Mm. You know, and you know he would go into that. You know, what I mean, and they wouldn't clear those. So, um, yeah, I man, I think I think they they more or less they happy. They you know they applauded that man. That you know that that was inevitable. Right. You know what I mean? They seen it, what direction it was going in. You know what I mean? Yeah. You, have you still been involved in in the music industry or anything since then? Well, no, I man. I, I mean, I've been doing a little writing. Um, I've been putting a piece together, Got you know, TV. Um, a couple of pieces together, a book um, about Thug Life Revelations. Um, you know, I put it up and down. You know, I got to pay these bills, so you know. Right. But however, you know, um, the music industry, I haven't even stepped in that direction, man. Because like I was telling you, I was kind of salty about not, you know, getting getting paid like I was supposed to get paid. You know what I mean? Right. But, uh, you know, that was all a part of growing up yeah. and life lessons. You know what I mean? So, oh, well, the experience, man, that Pac gave me, man, I'm telling you, man, like he said, I ain't never had a friend like him. Right. And then the, the, just yeah. like Pac, Pac told me, and he, he was talking to me in his music, man. I ain't never had a friend like him. That's what I was meaning to ask you about. You, you know, we briefly spoke about that. What, what was going on during them circumstances that made him write that song? Was it like y'all were just going through different issues or like? No, nah, well, like, like, like the money didn't like the money getting you know, the money had been uh, you know in circulation for a while. You know what I mean? Like I, I like I said, I'm a fast moving. I was a fast moving dude back then. I was in the street, so I needed my money to you know to to, to get along what I, I had going on. So you know, I was kind of you know like, what's up with the money? You know, and then you know stupidity a young stupid dude you know what i mean and you know so he now i had stopped talking to everybody and for one minute then i talked to him again and you know just being a kid 
You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> just being a kid, man. So, you know, he just seemed like little subliminals, but he would never diss, though. Right. You know what I mean? And he, like I say, he would get at me like I had a wreck. That's how I got off tour. I had a wreck, man. I had a, a near fatal wreck uh, back in 94. And, uh, you know, when I got out of the, I, I mean, up until a coma. And uh, when I got out of the coma, I, I pop called the hospital and, you know, and was just talking shit, you know, just, you know, just all that. And then since then, from then, you know, I was just like touch basing with him from time to time. You know, uh, I talked to him through Mo one time. Um, I was in L.A. one time when he was in L.A. one time. And um, I talked to him. Okay. But, you know, we never did really connect. I mean, especially since when he got with Suge and them. I don't, I don't even know them dudes. Right. If it's um, if it was one memory, not not Except not the memory Snoop, moment, though. Or you was cool with Snoop. Yeah, I, I knew Snoop. I mean, you know, to me, I I, I I we had done a show with Snoop. I mean, like at uh, at Jack the Rapper one time, like back in I think that was ninety three sometime. We had uh, Luke Skywalker came through there and was was raising hell because I, I think they was dissing each other or something. Yeah. And uh, we had, we went on with Snoop and them back then. Uh. I mean, then you know we we messed with Snoop and Long Beach before, as mm-hmm. a matter of fact, and I had a little motel, man. Yeah, I, I knew Snoop. I mean, you know, in passing, like you know, we we players, so you know, players recognize as such. Right. If it's like the last memory that you would want to stay on people' hearts about that, you know, Tupac, because he's almost like a mortified into the game. You know what I'm saying? At, at this particular point, if it was one thing that you want people to remember about his character, you know, what would that be? I would say that Pac is a prophet, man. Pac is a real prophet. Yeah. Pac told me some things that I had never heard to where I had to call my mother. And this is on my dead daddy's grave. I had to call my mother. I called my mother and let her and let her listen. Because this was changing my whole envision of life. I mean, my mother can attest to this. And Lord knows my mother saved, sanctified, filled the Holy Ghost. Yeah. I called my mother like, Mama, why? Look at, look what he's saying. Ain't nobody, you know, all, everybody who's talking to me talking garbage. Right. I mean, you know, garbage in, garbage out. So when, when Pac, man, Pac was a real prophet, man. Mm. Seriously, but regardless of how he ended up, you know, the influences that led him, you know, down the road he went down or whatever, man, Pac was a real prophet, man. Will you be going out to see the movie? Well, I don't even know, man. I, I've been hearing, like, p- p- different people that seen the, you know, seen stuff and stuff and said they didn't really have psych in there or nothing. Like, you know what I mean? But, you know, I'm not even in it for that, man. You know, I'm I'm probably going to go take a look at it. Yeah. I'm probably going to go take a look at it. But I just wonder how, how did they, you know, get us out of there? You know? I mean, now I'm, I'm not even expecting no, I'm, you know... Like no mm, check nothing. or nothing from it. Nah, you know, yeah. but dang, it seems that's like impossible. <laughs> it, it seems, you know, from the little bits and pieces of information I get about the movie, and I'm not like tied into the industry or nothing like that. But it seems like they purposely do that because they think the individuals are going to want some form of check from it. So they cutting out so many yeah, key players. Yeah, 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 yeah. See, and that, yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. But Psych was telling me something about a. A project that was coming out. See, I was in touch with Psych. I always have been in touch with Psych. I mean, to, I've, I've gone and stayed months with Psych, and uh, you know, in in Hawthorne and Marina Del Rey. I mean, you know, so I've met me and Psych have never lost left contact unless I was in a prison, hmm. <laughs> unless I was in one of these prisons. You know what I mean? Yeah. But yeah, man, uh, man. Well, I hope wow. I, I hope they do some type of justice, you know, in this particular movie. And it's not just just Hollywood just to bring people out just on some shoot 'em up bang bang that people get the opportunity, especially for this generation yeah. that wasn't here when he yeah. was here to get to know the real him. You know. Yeah, I mean? and like Sykes said on Vlad TV, man, we the one we're the one that raised Pac into that, man. Yeah. I mean, you know, we man, so I mean however it pans out, it pans out, man. May he rest in love, man. You know? And and this might be a weird kind of question, but let me ask this. Do you think if he never went down to L.A. and kind of stayed up there with you guys that he would still be alive? Or do you think just God had his plan? Well, it was a 
wasn't big enough. It wasn't big enough in the Bay Area for Pac, man. He needed at least L.A. I mean, New York. I mean, you know, to, to get him on the stage to go on world, worldwide as he is now. I mean, you know, so I don't know. I think it was just his fate, man. Yeah. I can't say if you stayed in the Bay, it wouldn't happen to him because it can happen in the Bay. It can happen anywhere. You know what I mean? Yeah. How so was, you know, I, I can't, I can't, I can't say, man. I mean, my I, this was his destiny, man. Is his legacy like real strong still in the Bay now, or do you, or like people still rock with him hard out there? Because you know, you got the, you got the iconic people like Mac Dre and all that stuff. You know, uh, yeah. rest in peace to him. Is his legacy still strong out there in the Bay? Man, I got, I got my drop cutlass, man. I got a seventy drop cutlass, man. We done keep your head up in. Mm. Me, Pac, and uh, man, you know what I mean? I never sold it. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, to represent Pac. You know what I mean? So I'm going to forever let... I seen a whole nother look in his eye. You know what I mean? Like, so, okay. you know, and then Psych told me, you know, Psych told me, like, it wasn't... Death Row wasn't cool. Shit, it wasn't cool. So don't even that try to, you know, TV. go aboard that. So I didn't. So once, once Pac actually was down there in L.A., and you know, and I know you said it was a form of some type of separation once they got with Suge and all that stuff. How did the original Thug Life members like look at his situation? Did did, did it feel the same, or how, how did y'all look at it? Well, um, well, the politics uh, down there in LA are different from 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 the area. Um, he had you know been running with you know Big Sight um, and Rated R, Macadocious. Um, and you know they they were one side of the politics and Suge was the other, so I guess I, from what from what my understanding Suge was like making a difference, pressing the issue on the difference. So where where we weren't, we don't you know Bay Area uh, Richmond in general can give a damn about a crip or I mean a blood or a crip or whatever you know, and have love for them both the same. Um, so when he, you know, when he got down there, man, he kind of, everybody kind of cut Pac loose because they didn't want to go through any kind of disrespect because who knows if they can withstand disrespect from someone. I mean, say for if raising their voice, right? some people can't even withstand, you know what I mean? Really from somebody feeling like they you know, a boss or something and raising their voice yeah. where they can probably put their hands on one person or say different things to one person they can't say to another because right. another don't care who they are or who you know how many people with them it's them if i'm gonna get them i'm gonna get them so you know, that's that's probably what, what it was man we all just fell back just to keep it real we all fell back man because Pac was messing with them dudes man and you know and them dudes was push pushing you know what i mean shoot do we how do how do you feel or the individual that was from that area you know feel about the the recent i don't you know the recent slander from individuals like funk flex or whack 100 oh uh, well i've been hearing you know in the in the media the trenchman was kind of tripping out for a minute and uh you know and saying you know forget about dude or whatever whatever um man that's a bunch of hard wash i don't know if dude want to get a publicity stunt if he need that to add to his you know his blog well, yeah, I dish, Parker. Yeah, you real tough, huh? You real sharp. You know, I don't know what. You know, I don't know what to what it. <laughs> I don't know what to what effect he wanted to go with that, man. Yeah. Really, I mean, but it's you know, it's it's. Shoot, ain't nobody reacting to that. Not no real niggas. Right. <laughs> I thought you know at the end of the day, most quote unquote real niggas, you know, you don't really disrespect. A, a man once he dead, you know what I mean? Like it, it got to be some type of yeah, line that you draw. But, but then you got you, then you got dudes that go at anything at all costs. I mean, you know, you got cut those dudes like you know, just trying to raise a, a issue by saying something in the pocket like yeah, I did it, or you know, or, and, and not even know what they talking about, you know, or you know, you, forever in life you are gonna have dudes like that, man. I've ever I've seen them and gonna see them again. Right. So you know that that was nothing to no real nigga. Right. I mean, shoot, to, to the dozens of fake ones, you know what I mean? Oh, well, you know, more power, you know, uh, less power to them, you know? So, yeah, he, he, it's neither here nor there, man. Like Malky said. Do you uh, do you have any, like, unreleased music from back then or 
any pet, you know, anything that's still connected to him during that time when you said he had, you know, the, the folders and folders of music? Was it a lot of unreleased music got, that got left out there in the Bay? Nah, he took all that with him to LA. When he oh. moved to Sherman Oaks, he took, oh yeah, it, it was just, when, when he left and went, right, we packed his stuff up. That's why I said we moved him to LA, <laughs> literally. Yeah. You know what I mean? We packed his stuff up and, and you know, and, and moved to LA, but when we were out there, man, while we was, man, all he had was like, man, spiral notebooks, I mean, just, you know, <laughs> everywhere, man. I mean, everywhere, man, phew, filling under the room floor. Well, I can definitely tell that, you know, you got much love for Pac and y'all was, you know, real tight, man. Yeah, man. That was my nigga, man. That was my that was my real nigga, man. Straight up. That was my real nigga, man. He straight up he took man, made me man. He put me on top of some game, man. Regardless of how I valued it, man. Now now that I'm I'm, I'm older and can really appreciate it, I can I can actually say Pac was really gave me a man. A piece of some real action, man. Cause I was just in them streets. I had the street fame. That's what that song was about. Me. That song was directly about me, not Mike Cooley. Me. Back Hex TV. Which one? Um, never had a friend like me. That one and Street Fame. Street Fame. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, um, you know, man, when Pac gave me the opportunity, man, to, to man get away from all that. When when we talked about investing in Thug Life, man, this is the, the sermon he gave me, man. Nigga, like, we ain't finna be running from the police about, man, you even had uh, guards around you with guns, man. You ain't finna have to be strapped in the game or, you know what I mean? Yeah. Seriously, so this this is the dream. I feel like he sold me, you know what I mean? When I didn't get paid as much as I felt, I should've got paid. You know what I mean? He he was trying to make a difference, in, in, not only in his life, but the people that was around yeah, him. Yeah, around him, man. Around him, man. He took me out of the ghetto, man. On the run. You hear me? On the run. For yeah. some, for, for some, for, for some, some stupid circumstances, but uh, you know, some real ones. <laughs> right. So, you know, he took me out of the hands of that. I had an ID, everything. You hear me? I'm talking about all over America, man, from from from, from the Big Apple to the nation's capital, man. Yeah. You hear me? Straight out of Richmond, California, man, from there, from the street to there. Straight up, all, man, everywhere, man, knowing everybody, man. Really, man. Do you think? Seriously, man. I'm wondering, as far as that, the, the idea of the 50 states, when he first brought up the idea of like trying to get one general or one rapper in each yeah. 50 states, you know, how did y'all all look at that vision when he was talking about it? Did it seem realistic or? Well, like I said, around in that part, it didn't seem realistic to me. Because like, around that part, I was thinking, I was in the street still, you know what I mean? So I was thinking about street stuff. I wasn't really. You know what I mean? I had enemies, direct enemies. I had immediate enemies. I, I, you know, I didn't think about how the white folks was our enemies. You know what I mean? And making all of this happen to us. You know what I mean? Making our enemies be on our enemies. You know what I mean? I was thinking about, you know, so I wasn't too much into that. Right. I wasn't too much. My, my man, my cousin, man, he has a fifty niggas tattoo. Mm. He has a fifty niggas tattoo as well as Pop. See, he was around that era. That's around the Venus got a baby era. I, I wasn't really, you know, like I said, I was um, in a different stuff back then. You know what I mean? Yeah. But once, you know, shortly thereafter, shortly thereafter, um, you know, thug life. Um, I, you know, I, my, my, once I got in there, you know, it was on, man. We never left. We, I mean, you know. Well, at the end of the day, all I can say, I'm glad that you and Mans end up putting that investment at that particular time. Because if not we might not even have any of what we know of Tupac to this day. We never know. So, you know, from me to you, I want to tell you, we appreciate, you know, the investment in that all that you participated in the Tupac during that time. 